December 29th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Zechariah chapters 13 and 14 from the Old Testament In that day there will be a fountain opened up for the dynasty of David and the people of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and impurity. And also on that day, says the Lord who rules over all, I will remove the names of the idols from the land and they will never again be remembered. Moreover, I will remove the prophets in the unclean spirit from the land. Then if anyone prophesies in spite of this, his father and mother to whom he was born will say to him, You cannot live, for you lie in the name of the Lord. Then his father and mother to whom he was born will run him through with a sword when he prophesies. Therefore on that day each prophet will be ashamed of his vision when he prophesies and will no longer wear the hairy garment of a prophet to deceive the people. Instead he will say, I am no prophet. Indeed, I am a farmer, for a man has made me his indentured servant since my youth. Then someone will ask him, What are those wounds on your chest? And he will answer, Some that I received in the house of my friends. Awake, sword, against my shepherd, against the man who is my associate, says the Lord who rules over all. Strike the shepherd that the flock may be scattered. I will turn my hand against the insignificant ones. It will happen in all the land, says the Lord, that two-thirds of the people in it will be cut off and die, but one-third will be left in it. Then I will bring the remaining third into the fire. I will refine them like silver is refined and will test them like gold is tested. They will call on my name and I will answer. I will say, These are my people, and they will say, The Lord is my God. A day of the Lord is about to come when your possessions will be divided as plunder in your midst. For I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to wage war. The city will be taken, its houses plundered, and the women raped. Then half of the city will go into exile, but the remainder of the people will not be taken away. Then the Lord will go to battle and fight against those nations, just as he fought battles in ancient days. On that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which lies to the east of Jerusalem. And the Mount of Olives will be split in half from east to west, leaving a great valley. Half the mountain will move northward and the other half southward. Then you will escape through my mountain valley, for the mountains will extend to Azel. Indeed, you will flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of King Uzziah of Judah. Then the Lord my God will come with all his holy ones with him. On that day there will be no light. The sources of light in the heavens will congeal. It will happen in one day, a day known to the Lord. Not in the day or the night, but in the evening there will be light. Moreover, on that day living waters will flow out from Jerusalem, half of them to the eastern sea and half of them to the western sea. It will happen both in summer and in winter. The Lord will then be king over all the earth. In that day the Lord will be seen as one with a single name. All the land will change and become like the Arabah from Geba to Rimmon south of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem will be raised up and will stay in its own place from the Benjamin gate to the site of the first gate and on to the corner gate and from the tower of Hananel to the royal wine presses. And people will settle there, and there will no longer be the threat of divine extermination. Jerusalem will dwell in security. But this will be the nature of the plague with which the Lord will strike all the nations that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh will decay while they stand on their feet. Their eyes will rot away in their sockets and their tongues will dissolve in their mouths. On that day there will be great confusion from the Lord among them. They will seize each other and attack one another violently. Moreover, Judah will fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the surrounding nations will be gathered up, gold, silver, and clothing in great abundance. This is the kind of plague that will devastate horses, mules, camels, donkeys, and all the other animals in those camps. Then all who survive from all the nations that came to attack Jerusalem will go up annually to worship the King, the Lord who rules over all, and to observe the Feast of Tabernacles. 
But if any of the nations anywhere on earth refuse to go up to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord who rules over all, they will get no rain. If the Egyptians will not do so, they will get no rain. Instead, there will be the kind of plague which the Lord inflicts on any nations that do not go up to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. This will be the punishment of Egypt and of all nations that do not go up to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. On that day, the bells of the horses will bear the inscription, Holy to the Lord. The cooking pots in the Lord's temple will be as holy as the bowls in front of the altar. Every cooking pot in Jerusalem and Judah will become holy in the sight of the Lord who rules over all, so that all who offer sacrifices may come and use some of them to boil their sacrifices in them. On that day there will no longer be a Canaanite in the house of the Lord who rules over all. God, I'm just tired. <laughs> I... I have a lack of sleep lately and I need to work on that and I also am struggling a little bit the disease I have causes exhaustion and so kind of have that on top of it plus it's Christmas time and it's Q4 as far as selling season goes and yeah I'm just <laughs> I'm just tired but it's incredible verses like the end of Zechariah where it talks about on that day the bells of the horses will bear the inscription holy to the Lord the cooking pots in the Lord's temple will be as holy as the bowls in front of the altar meaning this incredible celebration where so many people come to faith so many people are claimed as your children so many things then become holy on those days that across the world that everything will bear your name and I've read the rest of the Bible. I know that not everybody gets saved, but it's just such a beautiful sight to realize and be reminded of kind of our end goal that there will be a distinct difference. There will be the people who are saved and the people who are not saved, the people who are going to hell. And you have called us to be disciples. You have honored us and blessed us to carry on your word and tell others about you. And I think the verses where you talk about strength in the Bible pertain a lot to that because we can run this race, but we can get exhausted. And if we don't have people around us to encourage us and remind us of why we do, why we're doing this, and if we're not in your word, uh, reminding ourselves while, why we are doing this, and if we're not looking towards that end goal, we become exhausted. And sometimes we fall away from what it is that we're supposed to be doing. Uh, we become almost numb to it, which I have done in the past. You know, this week, uh, it truly was incredible. I got to have the honor of being there when two people came to faith. Uh, and I got to pray with them. And <laughs> it is truly amazing to be able to stand in front of somebody and, and know that their heart and their life is about to change so dramatically. And they are about to affect so many other people throughout their lives, all because of you, God. And even though that is an amazing, heartwarming, God-focused, affirming time, we also have to remember that all those other times are just as equally important. The first time that we mention God to somebody, the first time we pray with somebody, the first time that we show love and, and your amazing grace to our neighbors, how we live our lives, all of those pieces needing to happen for exactly what you've called us to do, which is to be a disciple that makes other disciples. And you didn't say be a disciple who makes other disciples and you're there every time somebody comes to faith. You just say, go and be disciples, go and tell the nations about me. And we can do that with how we live. We can do that with how we interact. We can do that with how we, with what we post on social sites. But I think one of the most important things is to not lose sight of the end goal. That you reign sovereign over everything. And there'll come a time where every knee will bow and declare you Lord. God, please strengthen us and remind us that even the smallest things can have an effect on the larger picture. Remind us that we find our strength in you, not on our own. And remind us that our strength comes from being obedient in our life to you. 
I pray all this in your son's name. Amen.